This is a very special rifle that I was not expecting to get, and this is a video that I was not expecting to make. But the Lord moves in mysterious ways, and here we are. And you know by the title, this is a Ruger number no. one chambered in 303 British. And we're going to learn a lot about this specific rifle, but I think we're going to learn a lot from this rifle that we're going to be able to apply to all rifles and to better help us understand what makes for a truly great hunting rifle. So let's see what we've got here. Okay, we're still in the plastic here. Oh, that's a pretty rifle. And this rifle is extremely compact and light, which is interesting. Very interesting. We'll talk more about that shortly. But okay, so we've got a Ruger number one A, and we've got the barrel band here for the sling. We've got the front sight, which is also on a band. We've got the flip up rear sight, and we've got the one piece base for the scope rings, so like a rib on here. We've got the standard falling block action, hang tag still hanging on the trigger guard. And let's make sure it's clear. Of course, I'm sure it is, but. Nice trigger on this rifle. I was surprised by that. Now, let's see what all we've got in the box that came with it. We've got our rings. Gun lock, I guess. Yep. Well, they were using better locks then. It's 2010. We've also got uh, sling swivels. Allen wrench for the scope ring. Directions for how to use a lock. So where do we even start with this rifle? I guess it would be with cutting the same tag off, which that's a big deal there. This rifle, it's very rare. Not necessarily the number one, but chambered in 303 British. As far as I know, there have only been two rifles chambered in 303 British, production rifles, since the Lee Enfield in the 1950s. And that would be this particular Ruger number one made in 2010, and Uberti recently came out with a single shot rifle chambered in 303 British. Okay, so if I were into collecting, I would leave this on here. And this rifle's never been fired. So no, yeah, it's very rare. Okay, but I'm not into collecting. I'm into shooting and I'm into learning about hunting rifles. And, all right, so yeah, this one's going to get used. Now, with that out of the way, let's get down to business here. And I do want to say that the only three things that's required for a hunting rifle to be a really good hunting rifle is for it to be safe, reliable, and you'll be able to shoot it accurately enough to put the bullet where it needs to go. That's it. And it doesn't matter if it's the cheapest budget rifle from Walmart or the highest of the high-end custom hunting rifles. It has those three characteristics, it's a really good rifle. Okay, and most of us hunters would probably be better off stopping right there and just focusing on a good rifle and not worrying about everything else and then just spend our time scouting. All right, with that said, if we go a little bit further, we can go from a good rifle, hunting rifle, to a great one. Okay, and a great hunting rifle, it's going to match us and how we hunt and be more specific to what we're doing, more specialized. Okay, for instance, if I was hunting out west and regularly shooting over 200 yards, 300 yards, I wouldn't want to leave reaction 30-30. That would not be the rifle for that. Okay, but here in the southeast, if I'm hunting short pines a lot, that is a great hunting rifle for that. It's perfect in that situation. So what I'm talking about is getting a rifle that matches us as an individual and how we hunt. OK, 
Okay, and then also having the cartridge match the rifle. That's important. Okay, this rifle here, this is a light rifle. It's short, compact. I would not want this in 300 Win Mac. Okay, there are situations 300 Win Mac would be a great cartridge, and for some of you, I'm sure it is. It wouldn't work in this rifle. It would not be fun to shoot. Let's put it that way. Okay, so this rifle's chambered in 303 British. Perfect cartridge for this rifle. Plus, 303 British is a rimmed cartridge. Okay, that's part of why its popularity has waned so much over the years. Rimmed cartridges, you have to be careful in magazines with rimmed cartridges. The cartridge on top needs to be in front of the cartridge on bottom so that the rim doesn't hit the cartridge. If this one's behind it, when it goes to feed, it's, it's going to catch the rim of the cartridge below it. Okay, the Lee Enfields were designed to overcome that, but still it wasn't a good situation. All right, where so many people now use repeaters. This is a single shot. A rimmed cartridge is perfect for a single shot, plus the headspace comes off the rim. It's headspaced off the rim. Okay, and now you've got this giant rim sticking up there for the extractor to grab on and pull the cartridge out. All right, so extraction is very reliable. Right, again, perfect for this rifle. Right, so everything's matching on this one. The cartridge matches the rifle. 303 British is a very mild shooting, soft shooting cartridge, very similar to 308 in performance. Okay, it's perfect for this. It's perfect for how I generally hunt. Okay, usually I'm in the woods or I rarely have long distances to shoot. Okay, 200 yards is a, that's a long shot for me. I mean, there's places I hunt more specialized places that I can shoot further. But just normal average hunting, 200 yards is a long shot for me. 303 British, I can still reach out to 250 yards, no problem. So, perfect for what I'm doing, how I hunt. Okay, and again, what I said about this light, being lightweight. And that's, yeah, that's going to factor into some conversations here soon. But, okay, if we're hunting in places rough terrain, we're doing a lot of walking. I hunt generally public land. I'm doing a lot of walking to get to those places most other people aren't going to. Okay, a light rifle just makes that so much nicer. Okay, plus being single shot, shorter overall length because there's no action. This is going to maneuver swing well and thick brush and so forth. There's not as much sticking out there to hang on brush and so on. So. Yeah, this, this is just getting into something that really fits me and how I generally hunt. Okay, now there's the history. And most of us today, we couldn't care less about history, the history of rifles and so forth. Well, that's something that's really interested me because I've, as I've gone back shooting older rifles and studying history, I, I've realized how much of what we're told now about the modern rifles is just nonsense. Okay, so if we don't know the history, then we're at the mercy of marketing and then companies come out with this new whatever feature and, oh, you've got to have this feature on your hunting rifle or you're just, you're not set up and something bad could happen and you better buy this. Okay, well, Half the time, stuff they're saying you need, stuff that, you know, that was done a hundred years ago. It's nothing new. Adjustable triggers. I've talked about this before. They, rifles had adjustable triggers a hundred years ago. And then they started trying to make rifles cheaper back there in the 50s and 60s. And the adjustable triggers just all slowly went away. And then all of a sudden, Savage comes out with the Accu trigger in, I believe, 90s. And then that was the rage. Oh, you have to have a fully adjustable trigger or your rifle's just not accurate. And been around a hundred years before then. What, what did they say when they got rid of the adjustable triggers? Oh, this trigger without the adjustment so much more reliable. You need this. Anyway, I think it's good for us to know the history there. 
I think it makes us able to make better decisions and understand how much of what they're pushing and promoting is just marketing to sell stuff. Okay, and then there's also a, a really nice feeling that comes from knowing the history of certain rifles and so on. I enjoy that personally when I'm hunting, and this rifle here has got a pretty interesting history. Okay, Ruger number one. This was Bill Ruger's pride and joy, and he came out with it in 1967. He wanted a very elegant rifle for Ruger. He chose a single shot, number one, and this is based on a four quarts and design developed by John Four Quartz and I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, Four Quartz. And he was a Scottish gunsmith, came out with the rifle in 1872, I think. Okay, didn't sell a lot of them and then Gibbs partnered with him and then there was the Four Quartz and Gibbs single shot that was produced until early 1900s and not many of those made, extremely rare rifles. Okay, the patent expired and then more companies came out with single shots based on this action. Okay, action's been around for a while, it's proven, and part of why it was so popular was because this action is almost indestructible. So it could handle the really big African cartridges that were so popular at the time, and anyway, that, that made it it was well suited for those. Okay, well, one of the very first cartridges that the Four Quartz was chambered in was 303 British. 303 British? It's been around a long time. Okay, so as far as the history, we've got a, a rifle made in 2010 that came out in 1967 for Ruger. It's been an outstanding rifle for them based on a rifle single shot design that came out in 1872 and chambered in a cartridge that's been around since 1890 I think for the 303 British. So, a lot of history here and the cartridge and this rifle have worked together exceptionally well for a long time. This is nothing new so everything's been proven on this combination. So yes there are a lot of factors that could go into Choosing a rifle that's perfect for us as an individual and how we hunt. And this rifle has a lot of those features, which is why I've been so excited about this particular rifle. And I've wanted this specific rifle for a very, very long time. It just took me a very long time to actually find one, find one in outstanding condition, and be able to afford it. <laughs> okay, so I, I finally found one. All right, but now let's talk about the part that most of you are really interested in, and that's accuracy. All right, because that's the name of the game for so many today is just accuracy. And I don't know what the accuracy of this rifle is. All right, but that's part of why I wanted this rifle, this specific one. I've heard the accuracy on these were not great. I've heard the accuracy on Ruger number ones in general is hit and miss. Okay, I want to see if I can figure out why this is or isn't a very accurate rifle. I want to see for myself what does it do and then figure out why if I can. Okay, and as far as the accuracy of the Ruger number ones, and this will help demonstrate everything I talked about before on all the other features. This is also a Ruger number one. This is my Ruger number one B chambered in 270 Winchester. Okay, same action, but very different rifles. This number 1B has a 24-inch varmint barrel. And if I hold them up here, you can see they're very different rifles. Right, this is a 9.5-pound rifle right here. It is extremely accurate. I absolutely love this rifle. I love hunting with this rifle. This is the rifle that let me know, yeah, I really do like number 1s. Okay, and I know single shots aren't for some of you, but that's okay. Um, I like them, which, hey, I like them all. But anyway, great rifle. It was load sensitive, okay, and that's one of the tendencies of a single shot rifle. There's no action here. Your scope's actually mounted to the barrel. Okay, so harmonics are important with a single shot. Finding the right load's important. This was a 
one and a quarter, one and a half MOA rifle until I found a load that it liked and then the groups went from this to this. Okay, so this is a sub three quarter MOA with the particular load I shoot in it right now. And I love shooting the rifle. I mean, because it has that weight, it just shoots great. Okay, by contrast, I just measured this one and this one's six pounds and 15 ounces. Six pounds, 15 ounces, nine pounds, nine ounces. A lot of difference. Okay, and with number one A's, I've heard in particular these were hit and miss on accuracy. Okay, as soon as I picked up this rifle and felt how light it was, I was thinking then this could be a very squirrely rifle at the bench. And I'm wondering if that had factored into accuracy issues a lot of people experienced in the past with this particular rifle. I don't, I don't know, maybe people had problems with uh, number one Bs also. But anyway, that's, I'm going to try to dial this one in and just see how accurately I can get this rifle to shoot and can we figure this out. All right, so there's nothing left now for me to do but mount a scope on this one and get some ammo loaded up. And we're going to do a barrel break-in on it. Just, I believe my barrel break-ins, most of you that watch the channel know that. So we'll go through that process, see what we've got, and then we're going to start loading for this one. And See what we can come up with. And as far as scopes, scopes are important in all of this. Also, I've already said I don't plan on shooting long distances with this rifle, so I don't need high magnification with it. Okay, now this 270, I've got a 4x12 on here, which is perfect for what I do with this specific rifle. This is the rifle I carry to clear cuts and power lines, pipelines when I'm expecting 300 yard shots, 200 yard shots, that type thing. And the cartridge and rifle match and it's perfect for that. But this is what I would use for 90% of my hunting right here. Okay, and as far as the scope, I've got a brand new leftover Redfield Revolution 4x12 still in the box with plastic on it. This was made by Loophole. All right, Loophole bought the Redfield name, well, 2020 they sold it and discontinued these. And I think Dick's Sporting Goods bought the Redfield name and they're having some scopes made in China now. I hope they're good scopes, but I know these are. And I love these and I, I was able to get a couple before they disappeared. All right, well, I'm gonna use this four by 12 for the load testing on here. But as far as for hunting, I'm going to use this 3 by 9 by 40 That would just really work well with this rifle. A 2 by 7 would work really well with this rifle. But I just happen to have a 3 by 9 so that's my scope options. Okay, that's where we're at with the, the new Ruger number 1A. We've got some work to do still. But hopefully we're going to learn some stuff out of this. Now just for some quick channel stuff. I said this was a rifle I didn't think I'd be getting. Well, I didn't think I'd be finding it anytime soon. I've been looking for this rifle for a really long time online. Well, I finally found it. And Barber's Firearms out of Pennsylvania had it. So shout out to them. And so finally got the rifle. And then I said I didn't think I'd be making this video. Well, I just got this rifle last week. I didn't think I was gonna have time to make this video until probably the first of the year. I'm still working on the new house, the addition, and our deer season just started. Opening day for us, rifle season was last Wednesday. One problem was last Wednesday, I was on crutches. I messed up my knee really bad on Tuesday the day before. So anyway, yesterday was my first day not on crutches. So it's getting better. I thought I'd really messed my knee up something fierce but thank the Lord it's getting better and quickly and the part I said about the Lord works in mysterious ways well he found a way for me to find time to do this and start on this project so this is one thing I can do right now while I'm still nursing this bum knee so we'll go ahead and get started on this and just see what we can learn on this rifle once we finish this project though, I'm gonna be back wide open on the house 
who knows when I'll make another one after this, but we can enjoy this one right now, and hopefully I still get in a little hunting. I'm definitely not able to drag a deer right now, but thankfully we do have a long hunting season here, so I'm just playing it by ear at this point. So. Anyway, all right. Next time, we'll be setting up this rifle, checking out the bore, and breaking it in. God bless, and have a great day.